My name is Mort. That's silly. Isn't that a goofy... <laughs> Isn't that kind of a goofy move, right? <laughs> to have that as my name and act like that's real or okay, you know? <laughs> to walk around. I found out my parents almost named me Dylan. <laughs> Which is the coolest name in the world. <laughs> but instead they went with Mort. <laughs> First of all, just don't tell me that. Like, never, you know? That's like being like, hey, buddy, happy birthday. We almost got you this Porsche, but instead we got you this picture of a guy getting his penis crushed by a garage door. <laughs> That's not as good. That's... Yeah, no, it's okay. Also, you have to show that picture to every person who asks what your name is for the rest of your life. <laughs> All right, fine. My full name is Morton Edmund Burke. No, no, no. No, no, no. Does not deserve applause. That's not a good name for a baby. Not a good name for an adult man. It's only good for a 72-year-old middling novelist. That's the only... That's the only name it's good. Morton Edmund Burke sounds like a Borscht Belt comedian from like the early 60s. You know, who'd be like, you know who I don't like? That new guy, Richard Pryor. <laughs> nah, what's this guy doing telling stories about his life? <laughs> Stick to the gags, pal. <laughs> All right, now for an hour of one-liners about how I don't like my wife. <laughs> Let me tell you about the only time I, I met another Mort in public. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's crazier than you're thinking right now. <laughs> this dude, I was working at a pizza place and this guy walks in and he is the most broken man I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> just like shaking, coming in, just like, whoa. <laughs> He has to like, give me his phone number, you know, so I could like look up at his account. And I go, oh my God, Mort. And he goes, huh? <laughs> it's like nobody had said his name in a decade, you know. <laughs> I go, my name is also Mort. And he goes, oh, <laughs> scared of me. <laughs> and I go, do you have any advice for another Mort? And he goes, and I swear to God, you guys, he goes, change your name. <laughs> Like the name did it somehow, you know? <laughs> Morton Edmund Burke. That was a consortium of bullies paying my parents off. <laughs> you know what I mean? Of like, I right, will give you three grand, but here's the deal. You gotta make sure he's totally translucent, all right? Just see through. I wanna know he's nervous and see his heartbeat from a vein. You know what I mean? In the side of his head. <laughs> Should be pretty good. Give him ADD or whatever kind of shit prevents him from being able to make transitions in his stand-up set, whatever that is. <laughs> I don't know, maybe give him like a weird name or something, who knows. Okay, how about uh, Morton Edmund Burke? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, you people are sick. <laughs> I like it, I like it. You wanna get him killed, I understand. That's good, that's good. <laughs> Uh, I'm 13 years sober. Clap or I'll relapse. <laughs> yeah. I'd do it too. It'd be sad. <laughs> Very sad. Make for a sad comedy show. <laughs> it's like... But yeah, I got sober in Chicago, which is impossible. <laughs> you actually cannot get sober there. It's the drinkiest town in all of history. So, over there. I got sober in Wrigleyville. Oh. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Right next to Wrigley Field, which, if you haven't been to Wrigley Field, imagine a magical bar where you could also get sunburned. <laughs> Wrigley Field is where you go to get in a fight while you're throwing up. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's just where white people go to like not admit that they're in pain. You know, they're all like, it's about the baseball. It's not about the baseball. <laughs> uh, 
I was walking on the street in Wrigleyville one time and I heard my favorite sentence that I've ever heard to this day. Just a sonnet floating on the wind just entered my ear. This fair maiden, she goes, Mark, who cares if you're fucking me in an L? <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, all right. So I went ahead and made a list of people that would care. <laughs> Just so she knows if we ever run into each other. The police. <laughs> Curious children. They would. Uh, anyone whose ears or eyes have ever worked. They would. <laughs> and finally, the charitable organization Mafiasi, which is, you know, mothers against fucking in an alley and then screaming about it. <laughs> They do beautiful work. <laughs> I also, I got, oh, got mugged almost in Chicago. It was, this was at 3 a.m. I was walking home after an open mic, so I was about to black out. You guys are the <laughs> And I love blacking out, man. It was the best. It was so good. I, I don't know why you guys aren't blacked out right now. You should black out. It's so great. Because you know how most days you're like, I wish I were dead, but not forever, you know? <laughs> Six hours or something, you know? <laughs> Come back, try again next tomorrow, you know? <laughs> so I'm walking down the street and this dude stops me. I'm about to black out and he goes, give me your money. And I go like this. No, thank you. And just walk around. <laughs> I politely declined a mugging. <laughs> And I'm assuming it worked, because the guy was probably like, oh my god, I didn't realize I was mugging a first grader. All right. <laughs> so, so then when I had to get sober, I moved from there two blocks over to Boys Town and got involved in gay recovery, which is just the most accepting, loving, like gracious people I've ever met in my life. It was the opposite of Wrigleyville. So great. And there, I met my best friend in recovery, this guy named Wayne. And Wayne, the first day I met him, he still had the handcuff marks on his wrist <laughs> from the night before when he had crashed his Audi and tried to get the cops to shoot him. <laughs> and they didn't, which is how you know that Wayne is white. <laughs> It's like, it's super important to have wild friends because their stories are the best, you know what I mean? Like, normal friends, their stories will be like, you won't believe the way my boss looked at me today. <laughs> but your wild friends will be like, you won't believe the amount of money I'm embezzling. I'm like, I want that. <laughs> I want that story. <laughs> and I learned this early on because, and this is true, in third grade, my, this kid came up to me, this kid named Mike, Third grade, picture a third grader, and he comes up to me on the playground and he goes, hey, I have a great psychiatrist. You should take one of his cards. <laughs> and he had stolen a stack of business cards from his psychiatrist. So not only was he in seeing a psychiatrist in third grade, he was stealing from him as a prey. <laughs> I was like, this is my best friend for the rest of my life. <laughs> That's the funniest thing in the world. None of us could ever, ever do that. Because you have to be in third grade to make it perfect. You know what I mean? <laughs> so good. So Wayne loved meth. Couldn't get enough of the stuff. <laughs> he, <laughs> he did so much meth that he got good at computers. <laughs> You're my favorite person alive. <laughs> that's, you know what I, that's a really specific amount of meth, right? Because you don't do enough, you're just a normal guy. If you do too much, you end up worshiping VCRs. And that's a whole other... <laughs> this is hard for your family. <laughs> but so Wayne, he, he, this is what he did. He worked for this insurance firm, and he, he took all... He was the IT guy, and he took all their computers and created a lock-safe system that only he could access so they had to keep paying him to fix their computers, do you understand? So they were like, he was extorting them for their computer system. <laughs> yeah. 
which is how he got meth rich, which is a lot of, you know, it's great. Because <laughs> we were getting sober together, and when you're getting sober, all you do is like shake and smoke cigarettes and complain. That's the whole thing. <laughs> And so we would just do that in diners together and he would like buy me hamburgers all the time. It was a really beautiful, for me, a beautiful relationship. <laughs> One time I did have this experience where uh, I went to his house and he was hooking up with a guy that looked exactly like me. <laughs> Except for this guy was the most confident person I'd ever seen in my life. And I don't know if you've met the you that believes in himself, but it is humiliating. He looked so good, perfect hair. He had a puka shell necklace and it worked. Like, that's, insane. that's like wearing a tire iron for an earring. You're like, this guy's so hot, he fuck makes it work. I don't know how. He was so confident, he goes to my friend, he's playing PlayStation, he goes, Wayne, get me a pizza. What, what are you, Rick Ross? Like, who talks like that <laughs> to another human being? That's how confident he was in their relationship. This is how confident I am in my relationship. The other day, I uh, accidentally called my girlfriend by the dog's name. <laughs> something you do when you're feeling real good about it. You don't usually make mistakes like that, you know what I mean? And it wasn't like she was in the other room so I could play it off. I was looking right in her eyes. I go, hey, Cody, uh-oh. That's the dog's name. Two, two, two weeks later, she goes, uh, hey, Mort, when's the dog's birthday? I go, August 16th, everybody knows that. But I should have pretended like I didn't know because then she asked me what her birthday was. <laughs> yeah. Like a 1980s comic, <laughs> I didn't know. I go, trick question, you don't have a birthday. <laughs> it's June 19th, she has a birthday. 